Everyone knows I love a good curry, and there's no better curry than a Penang curry. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make a Penang curry using duck legs. These duck legs are really easy to get. Just rip the labels off like that and then season them up. Salt loves meat, meat loves salt. You need plenty of salt on your meat because that's what brings out the flavour. And of course, some pepper as well. Plenty of black pepper over the top of it. And that's what will make these duck legs delicious. Now my pan is nice and hot and I'll add just a little extra virgin olive oil just to give it a great sizzle. Now ducks have a bit of fat in their skin and that's great flavour, but it also helps to render out. And a little bit of oil into the pan. Hear that sizzle? That's what you want to hear. A little bit of oil in the pan helps to get that rendering going. Now the duck legs will go in here and I want to brown them off a little bit and that'll give me an opportunity to get everything else ready for the Penang curry. A little bit more salt on the undercarriage there and of course some pepper on it as well. You can hear that sizzle, you can see it. Garlic, onion and ginger already sliced, ready to go. In that goes and the sizzle's already happening. Now curry leaves, one of my favourite things. If you happen to get some of them, you just grab a branch off like this and just carefully pull the leaves off with your finger. Drop them into the curry and let them fry off with the onion and the garlic and the ginger. As soon as you put them in there, you get a great flavour. The entire house will smell like curry once you put them in there. And in fact, your neighbours might even smell it and jump the fence and come and get hold of some. Now we need a bit of heat and I've got some chilies. I've got three chilies here. Two red, which are really hot, and one green, which is extra hot. And I'll cut them all the way through this right up to the cap. If you want to, you can take the seeds out of it and cut them nice and small. But my curries, I like them nice and chunky. A few kaffir lime leaves, in they go as well. And coriander. I've made sure I've washed the coriander really, really well. And I'll cut it up to about four or five centimetres from the root. Make sure if you're using the root, wash it really, really well, because that's where the dirt will be. I'll pop this aside. In goes the coriander. And you can smell the flavour is coming together beautifully. Now to give it a Penang flavour, I'm using a curry paste, a Penang curry paste. A good couple of tablespoons in here. In fact, I'll use the entire jar because I want this jam packed full of flavour. Now the trick with using a curry paste is to just stir it in. Let it fry off so all the oils in the curry paste cook nice and gently and become nice and flavoursome. You can tell as soon as you put it in there and start frying it, the flavour comes out beautifully. Now all I need to do is let my duck brown off a little bit more, let my curry paste simmer for a little bit more till the flavours come out of it. This won't be long at all and this will be delicious. This is coming along beautifully. Now it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. I've got some coconut milk, two tins of coconut milk. You've got to have this flavour with Penang curry. That's what brings it all together. And this will give it nice creaminess. It's delicious. I love coconut milk. Some soy sauce. I'm using light soy and I use about a quarter of a cup in there to give it some flavour. And some caramel sauce. I like my Penang curry to be quite dark. So I add about a tablespoon of this thick caramel sauce. It doesn't have a lot of flavour, but it makes it nice and dark, and that's what it's all about. And some chicken stock. A good sploosh of that in there, about half a cup in there, and some sugar. I'm using coconut sugar to give it some sweetness. Stir that around like that, and you can see I've got enough heat here for this to come to the boil almost straight away. Now the duck is all sealed off on each side, and I'll just carefully take the duck and snuggle it into the curry. As the duck cooks in the curry, it'll soak up all those flavours. The sauce will thicken up nicely and absorb the flavour of the duck as well. And the fat here, I don't let any of that go anywhere else but straight into the pan. The fat will give it so much flavour. I don't want to waste anything. Now this has come up to the boil already and I'll know the duck is cooked. In about an hour and 20 minutes, I'll get a fork and when the meat comes off the bone, it'll be fantastic. Into the oven we go. Penang duck curry, have a look at this one. The duck is cooked all the way through and the sauce 
You can tell it's a good curry when that oil rises to the surface. You might think that oil, oh, we don't want to eat that, but the oil is the best part. A little bit of that sauce on the top there. You can see all the curry leaves in there and a little bit of chili on there as well and that spring onion. And then a little bit of greenery on the side there to make it look pretty. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? And you could have this with rice, naan bread, or just on its own. And all you need to do is just pull it apart. And this is how I know the duck is cooked. A little bit of a push like that, and it comes off really easy. That's the trick to knowing whether your duck's cooked all the way through. A little bit of fat on the outside, that's where the flavour is, and that sauce has gone all the way through the duck. Mm. That takes me straight back to Penang. The flavour is incredible. Very simple but subtle. Lots of curry in there and just a little bit of spice. That is a perfect curry and a perfect way to cook duck.